Now, CNN political commentator and host of CNN Smirconish and attorney at law, Michael Smirconish. So Mark Short, the highest level person within the former administration to testify in this criminal probe into January 6th. The New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, we should note, also reporting that Pence's former counsel, his vice presidential lawyer, Greg Jacob, has also testified there. How significant is this, Michael? It's potentially very significant. Big picture is this. I've always believed that Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee in 2024, so long as he's healthy, so long as he's solvent, and so long as he's unindicted. Okay, now we're in that third realm. John, you know, for a long time, we thought that he faced the greatest legal peril from the Southern District. And then all of a sudden, it appeared that the Southern District was really not pursuing criminal charges against Donald Trump. Then it was the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Anybody remember Cy Vance Jr. and the question of what's he going to do before he leaves office? Fulton County, and we'll talk about Fulton County, all of a sudden comes out of nowhere, posing real legal peril to Donald Trump. And all the while, because the House committee can't bring criminal charges despite all their aggressive work, all the while it has appeared that the feds have been the, the tail on the dog. Well, maybe the feds were underestimated because, as you point out, this is a federal grand jury seemingly looking not just at the events of January 6th, but also the preceding events, which would include January 4, that Oval Office meeting where John Eastman is present. They're leaning on Mike Pence, and Eastman knows that what he's asking Pence to do is in violation of the Electoral Count Act. The question is, did Donald Trump also mm -hmm. know what they were asking was illegal? Yeah, how much more likely, that, that goes to the question I have for you, Michael, which is how much more likely is it that Donald Trump faces legal consequences? How much more likely has it become over the last couple of months? I'd be very nervous if I were him. I'd be far more nervous than I would have been six months ago. I think it's been a calculated strategy on his part, Brianna, that he's continually, I mean, right through today, probably when he gives a speech in Washington, D.C., continues to say that the election was stolen from him, maybe because he believes it, maybe also because he knows that it gets to the criminal intent issue that we're discussing about what he knew as of the time of January 6th and when he was speaking to Mike Pence on January 4 and asking him to do certain things in that certification process. Michael, let me read you the Wall Street Journal reporting about what these individuals were questioned about by these federal prosecutors. The journal writes, one area of interest to prosecutors was the January 4th, 2021 Oval Office meeting where John Eastman pushed Pence in Mr. Trump's presence to either reject the electoral votes outright or suspend the proceedings and ask several state legislatures to re-examine the results. The Journal also reports prosecutors asked detailed questions about Rudy Giuliani, who forwarded to Mr. Pence's office letters from individual state legislators urging Mr. Pence to accept false slates of electors claiming Mr. Trump won from states he actually lost. Okay. So who should be concerned if the federal prosecutors were asking these questions and what laws might be at play here, Michael? I would think that Eastman, the lawyer, should be nervous. I would think that the former president should be nervous. Rudy Giuliani should be nervous. You know what occurs to me, John, as you're reading from the journal, I'm all of a sudden remembering the federal judge, I think a Bill Clinton appointee, to the extent that matters, David Carter, David O. Carter from California. Remember, he's the one in the spring who, in a legal opinion relative to John Eastman and whether he was going to have to make uh, a production of documents said that he thought that both Trump and Eastman had violated the law. I'm sure this is exactly what he was referring to when he offered that opinion. All right, Michael, stand by for us, if you would, because this morning a Georgia judge is blocking the Fulton County District Attorney from investigating Republican State Senator Burt Jones as part of that probe that Michael was talking about into efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Jones served as one of 16 fake electors for former President Trump in December of 2020. CNN's Nick Valencia is live for us at the Fulton County Courthouse in Atlanta with uh, more here. Nick, tell us what happened. Yeah, good morning, Brianna. According to the judge here in Georgia that made that decision, he called the optics of what Willis did horrific, going so far as to characterize it in open court as a what are you thinking moment. The district attorneys here in Georgia are partisan. They come with a political affiliation. Willis 
is a registered Democrat and held a campaign fundraiser for the political rival in the lieutenant governor's race of Burt Jones. She also donated to that political rival's campaign. She's since been disqualified from any prosecution related to Burt Jones for her involvement in his political rival's campaign. Uh, we know that uh, Burt Jones is not only just a Republican state senator here, he's also one of the so-called 16 fake electors that participated in a plan to subvert the Electoral College to try to certify former President Trump as the rightful winner of Georgia in the 2020 election when we know he was not. Uh, Willis has now been disqualified for a conflict of interest as well as political bias. Her counsel in court filings tried to indicate that her support for Jones' rival in lieutenant governor's race should not be grounds for disqualification. A judge clearly disagreed. Now, a special DA may be selected to question Burt Jones. That's yet to be seen. But a big week here in court is expected, where at least 11 of those 16 fake electors are expected to arrive here in court to testify. Remember, guys, it was last week that they were served a letter saying that they'd gone from witnesses in this criminal probe to targets of the criminal investigation. Fonnie Willis's investigation here of election interference, uh, election interference has been wide-ranging, broad-reaching. Remember, there's at least seven key Trump allies that have also received subpoenas, including the Republican senator in South Carolina, Lindsey Graham, as well as the attorney for President Trump, Rudy Giuliani. It's yet to be seen how this misstep by Willis will affect her case going forward. Brianna. All right, Nick, thank you for the very latest on that. Back now with Michael Smirconish on this piece of this uh, puzzle here. What do you think about what she did? I mean, are you as surprised as the judge was? This is a what are you thinking moment? No, I think the judge is absolutely correct. Big picture. So Fonnie Willis has arguably the most aggressive investigation underway pertaining to the Trump administration, the events of January 6th, the leaning on Brad Raffensperger, and also the slating of these phony electors. I say she's farther along because, as the report just suggested, she's already issued target letters. And you really don't get to the point of issuing a target letter until you've got particular focus in your probe. So what did she do? She got involved in a fundraiser in primary season. And, Brianna, she tries to say that that's significant because it really wasn't with an eye toward Senator Jones, who's now being investigated, but rather she was only picking favorites in primary season. The judge didn't buy that because, after all, whomever won the primary was going to run against Senator Jones. The takeaway is she got politically involved in a race where now she's investigating one of the participants, an incumbent. Does it, does it put the kibosh on the overall investigation? It does not. They'll probably try and, and create some type of a firewall so that the investigation continues, but that she has to be limited with regard to this one focus of the probe. Yeah, that was my question. It's an interesting carve out, mm -hmm. right? Because he is not the only fake elector who has been notified of being a target. There are others as well. So she still, in theory, has plenty of avenues to go down to investigate, Michael? She does. Look, all politics are local. It's not surprising that, that you know, with the, there would be this inner connectivity and there would be old grudges and so on and so forth. But I, I have to say, w when you are in a prosecutorial position, and even if it doesn't say it in the black and white, you can't be involved in partisan politics. It's just a huge no-no. And the judge was flabbergasted, and I'm not surprised. Yeah, it's not that there's no there there with the person that she's perhaps looking at, but you can't be the person as she is to be checking on it. All right, Michael Smirconish, always great to see you in the morning. Thank you. And you can catch Michael's show at 9 a.m. on Saturdays.